Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining today, and welcome to Getting Started with Slack for Admins. My name is Vikas Bhagat, and I'm a senior group manager on our product marketing team. Joining me today is Melissa Greco, who we'll be hearing from shortly. Before we jump into the content today, I wanted to lay the groundwork in terms of what to expect from today's session. There's really three key questions we want to help answer and provide context on. One, what type of impact can you make on your organization as a Slack administrator? Two, what are the tactical things you can start doing today to drive that impact? And finally, what are the resources and assets available to you today to continue to deepen and strengthen your skill set as a Slack admin? With that, let's dive in. As a Slack admin, it's important to zoom out and think about some of the core challenges you're trying to solve for your organization and for your workforce. Employees today expect seamless communication, efficient collaboration, and more trans transparent communication amongst one another. The thing is tools like email aren't up for those challenges. They don't meet those demands. It's a 50 year old technology that isn't helping organizations improve their productivity. What we suffer from today are siloed inboxes, fragmented communication, and frankly, a deluge of information thrown at us constantly on a daily basis. At the same time, our employees and our end users are suffering from constant switching between applications. Dozens of alerts, notifications hinder us from getting our best work done. Not only is this frustrating and confusing, but it actually has a quantifiable loss on productivity and efficiency. In fact, according to our state of remote work survey, 64% of knowledge workers said they'd spent up to 30 minutes a day simply switching between applications. It's a constant problem. And as many of us know, the shift to remote work has only exacerbated these challenges. I've been sitting around behind my dining room table for 15 hours a day, just like many of you, trying to get my best work done with my coworkers. It's a challenge. And here at Slack, we believe that our channel-based messaging platform is a conduit to a better way of getting work done. The thing is, moving from inboxes into channels and moving away from fragmented applications into centralized workflows in Slack is really challenging. It requires behavior change. It requires an exercise in change management. And that's where all of you, everybody on this call, are our key vital partners to help drive that organizational transformation. You are the leaders, the stakeholders, the folks that are really driving change within your organizations with Slack. Whether you're standardizing norms to make Slack more secure or more organized, or finding better ways to drive engagement of the tool itself, we salute you in helping support and drive that transformation within your organizations. It's the same reason why we've actually built Slack with our admins in mind, to make it as easy as possible for you to get your best work done. We also want to provide you with the rich analytics capabilities to make sure you're not only measuring an engagement, but also driving adoption of the tool itself. Finally, we want to make it easy for you to unlock additional value from Slack by making new features like Workflow Builder and Slack Connect easily discoverable. Let's jump into the first area, managing Slack at scale. This is more than just a daily maintenance of Slack, but actually about customizing Slack to meet your unique business needs. And when it comes to managing Slack at scale, there's four key ways to think about that management across our product. The ability to manage workspaces, channels, members, and apps. When it comes to managing workspaces, we give you a wide set of policies and capabilities to not only manage which members can join a given workspace, but also tactically what users can access from a custom emoji standpoint. One timely example is the ability to set default custom suggestions from a status perspective. Here at Slack, for example, our IT team has allowed us to provide more granular status updates as it relates to remote work. Rather than using generic updates such as in a meeting or commuting, which frankly, none of us are really doing anymore, I've got the ability to show a little bit more empathy with my coworkers by saying things like taking a quick lunch break, spending some time with the family, or simply taking the dog out for a walk. It's a great way to drive that social connectivity within your organization. Another great way to manage Slack and given workspaces to be able to select default client providers at the workspace level. In this specific example, a Slack admin has the ability to allow their end users to quickly spin up a meeting using Cisco WebEx meetings. Again, as an admin, you've got the ability to remove Slack as a default client provider, because here at Slack, we want to be an agnostic platform. We want to be able to let you leverage the tools of your choice and for your end users. When it comes to managing channels, it's a careful balance of channel settings and responding to day-to-day -day requests like renaming channels. One great way to think about managing channels is thinking about posting permissions. Over the past couple of months with the shift to remote work, we've seen a lot of our customers leverage things like announcement-only channels, which allows HR teams or executive teams to share top-down news with the broader organization in one simple post. As a Slack admin, you've got the ability to control who can actually respond to those types of messages. You can make them read-only. This allows your end users to gather their information, understand what's happening in that post, and move on with the rest of their day. It controls the noise and limits people going off topic. 
Another great way to standardize channels within a given workspace is by using things like account prefixes. Here at Slack, for example, our sales team is whenever they're working with a new customer, creates an accounts prefix with their channels. This is impactful for two key reasons. One, it makes searching for information a little bit more organized when it comes to channels. And two, it helps drive discoverability. It creates more of that transparency and more of that seamless collaboration amongst all of your coworkers within an organization. When it comes to managing members, it's important to give the right access to the right people so they can get their best work done. One of the biggest challenges admins have is with the onboarding process when a new person gets, joins an organization. Now with Enterprise Grid, Slack admins have the ability to automatically enroll individuals into a default set of channels based on their identity provider groups. So for example, if you have a new hire starting in the marketing team in New York City, based on their IDP, you've got the ability to enroll them automatically in a group of channels to make that onboarding process as seamless as possible. Finally, admins are responsible for managing applications within Slack. Applications in Slack are a great way for people to interact with systems and data directly in the rich context of the communication that's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. The challenge with that though is as an admin organization, you wanna make sure that the data that's being shared with the applications within Slack is underneath your control and is secure. With Enterprise Grid, your Slack admins have the ability to have a centralized dashboards to not only install, but approve applications that are accessible for your entire organization. This allows you to make sure that applications that you're installing and implementing in your workspace meet your security and governance policies. And it also gives a message to your end users that everything that's been able to be down downloaded has been approved by a centralized admin team. If you'd like to learn more about managing Slack at scale, I highly encourage you to attend these two sessions. This first admin spotlight will allow you to hear directly from customers like Arizona State University on how they've scaled Slack to thousands of users within their organization. In the second session, you're gonna hear directly from Slack subject matter experts on putting together an app management strategy that allows you to comply with your security and governance policies. Another great way to drive impact within your organization as a Slack admin is to quantify the impact of Slack from an adoption and engagement standpoint. With rich analytics capabilities, you're able to not only measure adoption, but identify and optimize ways to continue to drive deeper engagement within your organization. With a centralized analytics dashboards, you're able to see exactly where people are spending their time and how usage is growing over a period of time. You're also able to see when and where people are spending their time, whether they're sharing channels or sharing messages or sharing files. This feature is automatically turned on and accessible for members across your organization. But of course, as a Slack admin, you've got the ability to limit who has visibility into this data. For those of you looking to customize additional engagement reports, you have access to our Slack data through our analytics API. This allows you to customize the data and connect Slack data directly with your BI tools of choice. It's a great way for you to partner with your leadership teams, your HR teams, or your executive teams to monitor and measure how Slack is being used by your employees on a day-to-day -day basis. It really allows you to focus on the KPIs that matter the most for your business. Finally, we recently launched a feature called Message Activity. If we look back to the example I used earlier about the announcement-only messages from your executive teams or HR teams, this feature actually allows you to see top replies, which departments are engaging with, an app, with, with a specific message, and really allows you to see how to optimize the best messages to cut through all that noise within Slack. It allows people to focus and optimize how they're sending messages to the broader organization. This feature is turned on by default at the workspace level, but of course, as a Slack administrator, you've got the ability to turn this off. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how to leverage analytics and data to drive adoption and maturity of Slack within your organization, I highly encourage you to attend the session with TIPCO. It's a great way to learn about how they've used organizational trends and the analytics API to drive deeper, deeper engagement with the Slack platform. Next up, I'll hand it off to Melissa to share with you how to get more value from Slack. Thanks so much. Thanks. Vikas introduced me earlier. I'm Melissa from Slack's product marketing team. This final area for admin impact is all about getting more value from Slack. Slack is so much more than a messaging tool, and you can play a critical role in deepening your team's usage, efficiency, and collaboration on the platform. As you become more familiar with Slack and even have some talented power users on your team, there are opportunities to go deeper, to speed up the pace of work and productivity, to extract more value from not only your Slack investment, but the rest of your software tools. In this section, I'll dive into two key features and enable the deeper level of productivity that I'm talking about through Slack Connect and Workflow Builder. 
Using Slack Connect, you can move the conversations you're having with partners, customers, vendors, and suppliers to channels where conversations are transparent and in real time, where it's so much faster and simpler to get work done together. Now, up to 20 different organizations can come together in a single Slack channel, enabling teams to bring even more of their external network into Slack for more efficient collaboration. Similar to managing apps, you can also maintain control over who can share a channel with whom. For example, we've seen customers often set up dedicated approval channels for managing requests to share channels with external organizations so that it's easier to triage and track all in one place. For those of you interested in learning more about this area, I highly recommend this session on Slack Connect, where you'll learn about popular use cases from Slack experts, admin best practices, and more. You'll also hear directly from Etsy and Snowflake's admins who will share, share how they successfully brought Slack Connect to their organizations. Another high value feature you can bring to your organization is Workflow Builder, which offers a simple set of tools that turn routine processes into automated workflows right in Slack. With Workflow Builder, you don't need to have any technical skills. It's a simple visual tool that allows any user to string together a sequence of steps that automatically happen once the workflow is triggered. Triggers include events like a predetermined date and time, a new person joining a channel, and someone reacting to a message with a specific emoji. Workflow Builder is great for simplifying coordination and communica communication across teams. So you can get those pesky redundant tasks out of the way and focus on your most impactful work. In the past year since launching, we've seen users create workflows that save time and streamline processes, like collecting feedback in a structured form, automating new hire onboarding, streamlining approval processes, and hosting daily standups, and much, much more. Today, we announced a new set of workflow steps that make your team's external tools and services available in Workflow Builder 2, so you can automate work inside and outside of Slack. These steps help automate tasks like sending information as a new role in a Google Sheet, pulling in dashboards from Datadog, triggering a new incident in PagerDuty, or creating a new task in both Asana and Trello at the same time. You can view a list of all the new integration steps available in the Slack app directory. And if you want to build a custom step for one of your company's internal tools or integration, that's possible today too. Check out how to do that on our Slack API documentation site. To get started with Workflow Builder, <clears throat> we recommend you set out with a perspective on who you'd like to create workflows. In your org settings or workspace settings, you can decide who has permissions to create new workflows. We like to refer to these people as builders. We've seen customers take various approaches like using a phase rollout where only select builders can create and publish workflows before scaling out further to the rest of their organization. You can get even more specific like toggling off steps from apps, the new feature I just mentioned, and other kinds of data related controls. Meanwhile, other customers allow creativity to flow, permitting anyone to try Workflow Builder from the start. Once you decide who can create workflows, the next step is socializing workflow templates with your builders for inspiration and education on common use cases. Builders can customize a collection of pre-built templates right from Slack, from onboarding new teammates to automating a daily stand-up. Lastly, as a builder, it's important to understand the effectiveness of your workflows, where there are errors, and how you might improve them. We just launched an activity reporting dashboard, so it's easy to track the analytics and performance of your workflows. For those of you interested in learning more about this area, I recommend you check out this session on getting started with Workflow Builder. It'll be a live workshop for all skill levels to learn how to build a workflow from the very start. And if you'd like to know more about today's Steps from Apps feature release, there's a session tomorrow that walks through the exciting details of that announcement where you'll also hear from product and development teams at Hearst, Datadog, PagerDuty, Polly, and Zapier. That was a lot of information. I hope it was a helpful primer for all that you can accomplish as a Slack admin. Remember, managing Slack at scale really comes down to customizing Slack to your organization's unique needs, keeping a lens on your workspace, channels, members, and apps. 
Secondly, Slack has tools that help you measure adoption and engagement within your organization, such as dashboards and native features like message activity. And lastly, you can really drive value in your investment by moving employees beyond just messaging in Slack by bringing deep customization to your organization with features like Slack Connect and Workflow Builder. Now that you have that broad context, we do have a number of resources and programs available to help you get started and deepen your admin skills. First off, we have Slack Certified. Last year, we launched Slack Certified as a way for admins and developers to build their Slack acumen, validate their skills through courses and exams, and receive an official badge that demonstrates their credibility. More than 200 people participated in this in-person course, so we're excited that as of last month, this program was now available online so anyone can apply and get accredited from wherever they're working. This, just, this course isn't just about learning Slack features. It's also about the broader art and skill of administration. Slack is designed to be flexible and customizable to your organization's unique needs. So we not only equip you with what tools and features are available to you, but help you build confidence and think strategically about how to make an impact in your organization. We're already seeing large companies like Oracle create official jobs for full-time Slack admins. So we're excited to be able to support the career growth of these professionals as they look toward future job opportunities at other companies or system integrators. There are three options for this certification. For those who are interested in a self-paced learning environment, you can take the admin prep course, which includes a comprehensive curriculum to build key admin skills. For those who are already seasoned admins and simply want to get accredited, you can skip ahead and take the online admin exam to earn your badge. And lastly, for anyone who wants to both learn and get certified, you can purchase both courses as a bundle. With that, I'd like to close with a big thank you. Vikas and I appreciate your time. We hope you enjoy the remainder of our first ever virtual Slack Frontiers and have a chance to gather actionable learnings to take back to your organization. Thanks, everyone.